All right, thank you very much for clicking on the video. Now, today we're gonna to be discussing a little bit about my home coffee setup, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, uh, roughly how much it costs me, and probably gonna be drinking an espresso. So I've already had a couple of espressos today, but why not? Let's do one more for the video, right? Let's see. If we're gonna make a video about coffee, we might as well drink a coffee. Now, for me, I am currently using the Gudja Classic Pro. Now, this video is gonna, it's a kind of budget setup. We're not talking super cheap. We're not talking pretty expensive. Let's say it's around the lower to, middle to lower range of cash. What, how much are you gonna spend? Uh, the machine itself isn't that expensive. I bought everything secondhand, first of all. So. Uh, the, the machine cost me roughly, I think, five, $500 ish secondhand. Uh, the grinder, which is the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, I think it's about 200, 250. Uh, this is Australian dollars. Then we're gonna look at, you can get a few upgrades. There was a few upgrades on the machine that were already done for me, uh, which is one thing that is, that's a pro, which we're gonna hop into about the Gadget Classic Pro, uh, pro for the pro. Unlimited modification. It's just an insane amount of modifications you can do. I mean, there are whole communities dedicated to upgrades of the Gacha Classic. Um, but today for my setup, which I think is really uh, a great, convenient home setup, uh, that's not Breville. Everyone has Breville's and nothing wrong with Breville. Like it's a, it's a, it's the first one you go to. It's the most popular coffee machine out there. Um, I think this setup works better for me. I think it's sexier. I think it actually looks a lot better. Yes, I'm using the Breville grinder. Uh, but I think the Gadget Classic Pro just has a timeless look to it. Uh, and I mean, secondhand, the price is great and the espresso is fantastic. So there's a lot of a lot of great things to love about this machine. Yes, there are some things that probably aren't uh, as good, but this is really like this kind of machine really goes towards the prosumer and those who want to actually make a little, uh, those adjustments and upgrades uh, to it over time. Because if you want to really uh, go down the rabbit hole and just mod it out like unbelievably uh, yeah, to the next level you're going to take it there and then we're looking at a machine that can compete with like the best of the best like like the linears and things like that so we're not going to get in that today we're going to look at a really really simple uh, way that I use it I mainly use it for black coffee so my I'm a double espresso drinker, so I'm going to show you how I make my double espressos. We can talk a little bit about uh, milk frothing. So my wife drinks soy lattes. Um, it's a little bit of a, a pain when it comes to frothing milk, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, the wand isn't the best, and as you'll see when we hop into uh, my me showing you about it, uh, there's not really much room to put a mug underneath that. But I suppose in, in conclusion, if you want to get a really, really sexy looking machine at uh, a pretty good price, whether you buy it brand new, but you know, I would always say go second hand when you're looking at these sort of things. So uh, a really good price for a machine, a grinder that does everything you need it to do at, again, whether it's new, but preferably second hand, a fantastic price and the few accessories that go along with it. Uh, I think you're gonna be able to to get a really good insight into into my workflow, how I make how I make my coffees um, and, you know, really achieving uh, that cafe quality espresso, because that's what we're here for, right? We don't want to get some shitty espresso that you're going to get from an espresso machine and throw out a thousand freaking pods. I mean, we want to use a good quality bean. We want to have a great experience drinking coffee, uh, and we want, to look, we want it to look sexy while we do it. That's, what, that's at least what I want. So this is a very personal review. This is no, by no means in-depth. This is more or less just me showing you guys what I do. Now, I want to start off with this shot first because I want you to get a good look at my kitchen. Uh, I have a lot of white in the kitchen for some reason. Uh, obviously tiles are white and the bench is white and the cupboards are white and the Google Hub over there is white. Uh, and just by chance, the gudger that the guy was selling on Facebook Marketplace came in white. So I thought it was a really, really nice touch uh, that it did. There are a few different colors you can, you can get it if you're gonna buy it brand new online. I think you can get, you know, a couple of different colors to match your kitchen, but I think it just looks really good in white and with a few like, little touches here and there, like the, the, the knob for the steam one. I mean, it's a nice little, little wooden accent there, but I think it just really looks good in my kitchen. And that goes to one of my first points is 
I think this machine is like it's a sexy machine. You look at these. You got some really really nice curves around there. Uh, it's it's a really classic machine. It's really I think it's just timeless. So like that's that's definitely a pro for me. I think it looks great in the kitchen. Whenever my friends come over, like oh you know even if they're not coffee enthusiasts or uh, they love talking about coffee machines, one of the compliments I always get is oh man that's that's a really nice looking coffee machine. Can I have a coffee? So I think that's a pro. Uh, the grinder that I use is the. Breville Smart Grinder Pro. If you haven't got the word pro in it, I'm saying pro a lot. I think pro is the, is the word of this video. Uh, but this is a great little grinder. Uh, the price point is, is top notch and you can really, really dial it in. So if we were turn, to turn it on, you can obviously adjust. There are a few different adjustments you can make on this machine. How long you want the grinder to actually grind for the shots in cups, which I don't really use this function, and most importantly, the grind size. So it, it goes from, I mean, if we're gonna look at this one in particular, we're gonna go from, a, we have a one, and we can bring it all the way up to, I mean, we, we can get super, 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 super coarse here. And if you guys are um, filter drinkers, plunger drinkers, you wanna make your own cold brew, I mean, we can really get some, some really nice coarse coffee here, but because of the ability of the gudger to extract the beautiful espresso, we really have to bring that to the finer um, side of this grinder. So we're really gonna get that really fine espresso grind coffee. Now, one caveat for this grinder, which you may have to do if you decide to purchase an espresso machine, whether it be the gudger or not, is actually adjusting what's inside here. So we actually have to adjust the grind burrs. So I'm not gonna go into the full details of that and be prepared to see some, some coffee grounds here because I've been a busy man lately. But these burrs are actually come out. And there's a gap between the burrs. And what I mean by that is we can adjust them to another step where they can go one step finer. What I mean by that is, before I made that adjustment, when I would grind something on the number two, it was coarser than what it is now. So I've made it that the gap is smaller. So my finer settings are much finer than what they originally were. Um, I'll see if I can find a video that will link to that sort of tutorial in case you guys want to check that out in the future. But essentially this, what we've got to remember is this is going to be able to get you where you need to go. You're going to be able to grind your coffee uh, fine enough with this machine and you're not going to have any worries with that. One of the great things about the Gadget Classic is the porter filter handle actually comes in 58 millimeter. So that's going to open you up to a lot more accessories you're able to buy, whether it be a tamper, whether it be the blind baskets or actually when you're you know, using your your handle that you can get uh, different size filter baskets. You go 18, which is what I'm using, 20, 22 gram baskets. And you're really gonna get that cafe quality and feel from these 58 millimeter uh, handles, porter filters. Then if you were to go to a cheaper machine where the handles aren't as large, so the diameter is, is smaller uh, and all around it just gives you a a flimsier feel and don't quote me on this but I feel that because the diameter is wider you're gonna get a more even extraction whereas the water has a wider surface area to actually penetrate the coffee uh, instead of having to filter down you know such a, a bit more of a depth in basket so I feel like the 58 millimeters are the way to go when it comes into using your porter filter and your handle uh, and again this is definitely one of the pros and why I love using my gudja. Now I'm going to show you from this angle one of the things that I do not like about the gudja uh, and this really depends on your sort of preferences because I make a lot of espressos so if you see the size of the cup it's quite small right we have a nice little espresso cup here but say for my wife she likes drinking soy lattes and if you're going to drink a soy latte you're going to need you know a mug or a latte glass 
like this with this sort of between the gap from the drip tray and the actual handle itself yeah. well that was easy but you can see how it can be a little bit of a pain and once the espresso actually starts filling up there to get this sort of cup out without spilling any can be a bit of a pain in the butt or if you're going to be using a larger mug from those larger mug drinkers you can kind of it's a little bit harder to actually can't even get that one under there it's a bit of a pain in the butt uh, and if you want to even use as I do a scale uh, when you're when you want to weigh out how much coffee's coming out then you know it's it's nearly impossible you're not going to be able to get that that under there so that's definitely a con there's not much workspace between your actual uh coffee and the drip tray so that's definitely a con but if you're a black coffee drinker and you love espresso i mean it's not going to be an issue because that's eas this easily fits even without the naked water filter my scale on my espresso cup so that's that works for me this is why it works for me. all right so i mean now we're pretty much ready to actually see like a basic workflow and what uh, what it can potentially look like when when we extract an espresso and the quality you're going to get from from this coffee uh, this is my workflow so check it out i know you people can go a lot fancier and spray their beans and then get rid of all the clumps in their coffee i i want to be a little bit more practical than that so this is a very yeah this is a practical sort of workflow let's check it out so now i do get a little bit um conscious about my brew ratio I find that with the particular beans that I'm using at the moment a 1 to 1.6 ratio works really well uh, that's about 18 grams in and roughly 30 grams out I think that's what it what it equates to be um, and if I'm off on that model well the actual flavor I get from that ratio whatever it is that's 18 to 30 grams uh, is really tasty so I like to weigh out 18 grams of coffee So you guys can see that's 18 grams on the dot, baby. Okay, now Smart Grinder Pro Time. Send those bad boys in there. This came from a hand grinder, one of those Japanese hand grinders. I forget the name of the brand, but this is what I use to catch coffee. Uh, you can buy those accessories, which make it a lot more there be a lot less mess. I think they have a bit more of a cone on the outside, but this works really well for me. Um, whatever you guys can find for yourself, I mean, just go for it. So, we're gonna hit that. All right, now that our coffee's ground, it's time to obviously make the espresso. Another pro of the Gaja Classic Pro is that you can fill the water from the top or you can fill the water if you take out the drip tray here you can actually take out the water tank there but what I always do is because I always seem to forget to fill it up and yes I know my water is not filtered water it's just tap water okay it's fine I said this is a practical review is I literally just fill up my pitcher hop over this way straighten the top Fill it up there. So in case you're ever running low on water and you're pulling your espresso shots, it's super duper easy to actually get that topped up. Now, back to the video. Quick look at this. Water filter, ground espresso, and she goes. With coffee, it's important to uh, minimize the amount of variables when you're actually making the espresso so you can troubleshoot if needed and also have that consistency when you're making your cup of espresso. Now, one thing I've found that has made, uh, leveled up my espresso game is purchasing a, <laughs> again, 58 millimeter tamper that is spring loaded. So it's always going to have the same amount of pressure no matter what. Uh, a lot of the times when you're dialing in coffee uh, you might be putting too much pressure not enough pressure and it's kind of hard to work out exactly where the mistake might lie when actually dialing it in 
if you buy yourself one of these, I bought this off Amazon, uh, I don't know, 20 bucks Australian. It's, it's been a game changer. It's, it's so much better. And then if my wife is actually making herself a coffee, she's always gonna have the same amount of pressure. So I highly recommend getting a spring-loaded tamper. So with that being said, tamp our coffee. Bring it back over here because now it's time to actually pull a shot. I'm not gonna do it with the bottomless porter filter on this one. I'm just showing you guys a general workflow here and I'm actually, I prefer not using my bottomless at this point in time. But I have my espresso cup on the scale and I've teared it off. A quick purge. Pop that in, scale, espresso cup, and let's see if this is dialed in because it's been running a little bit fast lately. So I also have my scale here, again, Amazon, uh, I don't know, a couple bucks, Google it. So we're gonna go ahead and go for a roughly 30 seconds. We're trying to get it between the set of 28 and 35 seconds uh, with roughly 30 grams of extraction. pretty fast I think that was about 32 grams in I don't know it's like 25 or 26 seconds it might have even been a little bit faster this is actually the fastest it's ever run for me on grind size 2 now the weather has recently changed here in Sydney it's become super muggy it's super cloudy it's raining I've never actually had to go down to a 1 uh, usually it sits between anywhere between the 4 and the 2 roughly when I grind it out uh, and that's always hit the sweet spot, but I think we're actually gonna have to start going down to a one. Now, because coffee beans are actually pretty expensive, I'm not gonna sit here and grind it out, I'm not gonna waste the coffee, but just so you guys can actually get a look at it. I mean, this is one sexy espresso. All right, so as I was saying, that's a good looking espresso. Even though it wasn't the ideal uh, brew ratio and time for extraction, we're still looking at a really, 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 really good cup of espresso. There's nice crema there. There's an excellent, you can't smell it, but I mean, there's an excellent aroma coming off that. So let's give a, let's give some final thoughts on this. All right, so now that we've sort of run through uh, my workflow and what I use, so again, Gaja Classic Pro, Breville Smart Grinder Pro, we have a spring-loaded tamper, uh, a few little things you might want to check out getting as well uh, a knock box a tamper mat just to make your your work for a little bit easier but for for roughly and again this is in Australian dollars I mean we're looking at shit what is it 500 bucks I paid roughly for the, the coffee machine itself um, 200 250 for the smart grinder pro uh, so we're looking at roughly 7 750 you could probably negotiate a little bit less maybe a little bit more I don't you know that really depends on who you're buying it from but we're looking at like we're looking at under a thousand dollars and we're getting cafe quality espresso i mean you can just see the quality at man you can't because it's not in focus but that's besides the point we're getting a really 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 good cup of espresso uh at, it's not the cheapest but i would still call this a budget espresso machine uh, because of the the spectrum I and mean, where you can go. Some coffee machines are gonna be in the thousands of dollars. So for essentially set up that you could have with all accessories uh, decked out, even with some upgrades for roughly eight or 900 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong with this sort of setup. Now, my, my caveat to this is if you do drink milk, the steam one does take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, it is a single boiler, so you have to turn off the espresso switch, turn on the switch that allows you to steam the milk, let it heat up for a little bit, which doesn't take long, it's just a couple of minutes. Uh, but I find that as soon as you hit the milk, the pressure, uh, it starts off strong, but it dies off quite quickly. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, I've made some like really glossy milk, some really, really nice coffees out of it, but sometimes it can be really hit and miss. So if you, if you like your milk coffees and you like the uh, texturing the milk, I would say this isn't the 
the best uh, and it can be a little bit frustrating when it comes into frothing milk until you sort of uh, get that, that flow down pat. Um, once you do get it, it's okay. There's probably better stuff in the market for that to be perfectly honest with you, but I think if you wanna make a really good black coffee, an espresso, your long blacks, ice long blacks, or just just really have a really fun, sexy machine that's in your in your kitchen that people are always gonna talk about that makes a great cup of coffee, like you can't really go past the, the Gudger Classic Pro. So. That's my final thoughts. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll be sure to put out some more. Anyway, see you later.